Hey everybody, this is John. Today I'm going to uh, show you the construction and operation of my bullet feeder and um, hopefully from that information you can make your own. Um, as for the electronics part, I'm going to do a different video for that because that's pretty, uh, uh, that's a little more complicated and will take more time. The actual mechanism that takes the bullet from the tube and puts it on top of the brass is just the Lee bullet feeder. Uh, and it mounts on to a, a plate right here for so this is pretty much specific to the Lee Loadmaster but you could take a tube like this and run it into the Hornady bullet feed die and that should work with you work with no problems but as you can see here the feed the feed fingers will bring the bullet out and put on the brass at first glance you think well that looks like a piece of shit and that's, it's not going to be very reliable but I've actually loaded with several thousand rounds now with this and it seems to work okay. The bullet feeder runs on a 12 volt adapter that uh, plugs into the wall 120 volts and I've got this is the control for turning it on and there's uh, off speed 1, speed 2, speed 3. One red LED shows you that uh, the thing is powered on. I have a green LED that shows me when the um, the, the bullet feed tube is full, so if the motor stops and the green light is on, it means it's full. If it stops and the light is off, then I know there's a problem. The bullet feed tube has two sensors, the bottom and the top. Um, when the top, when the bottom sensor is uh, senses a bullet, but the top one doesn't, you turn it on, or if it is on, it should fill up until the top sensor senses the bullet, and then it will shut off. So. Uh, this one turns the motor off, this one, uh, when both are empty, it will turn the motor on. Um, so that, that's basically how that works. There's a little bit more to it. We'll go over that in the electronics video. Uh, the feed tube here, as you can see, there's a bit of a curve in it. That's based on the curve. It's going to really depend on where you locate the, the whole feed, feeder from, on the bench relative to the press. It does have a bend into it. This is a half-inch copper pipe, and this is like a half inch to inch and a quarter, inch and a half or something uh, reducer. You can get this at uh, Home Depot. Just go down the plumbing section, you can get that and that. And um, as you can see, I mounted it on to be held on with a bracket. So with the bracket, I just use a, uh, a, an eye bolt. I guess, you know, there's a loop in it and that gets bolted on like that. I did solder this tube together so it would never slip. When you bend this pipe, you want to make sure you don't put a kink in it. I use a half inch tube bender, so an EMT tube bender that's electric uh, metallic tubing. So you get that in the electrical section. Those, you could buy it at Home Depot and return it if you wanted to. Um, just be careful you don't put any kinks into it. I did put some kinks into this, but it's really a trial and error sort of a fit. Bend it a little bit, try it, and then install it. When you mount this uh, adapter, this reducer, to this tube, Inside, what you want to do is take a file, and any lip that you that you see inside, you really want to file that down to make it very smooth. Also, you want to take some like 800 grit sandpaper or something, and really polish the inside so there's no ridge or any anything like that inside here. So when the bullet does fall in, it won't get caught up on any ridge. You really want that to be smooth inside so the bullet will sm fall smoothly. Another thing is you want to make sure that you have a um, a very smooth connection between the pipe and the plastic. So I've got this other, this is just a half inch, uh, half inch uh, copper pipe. And what I did, I put a bit of black tape on here. So when this goes together, this goes down. I have two uh, hose clamps to really keep it tight. And you want this bottom sensor then to be, you know, a little away from this because if the bullet falls and gets caught up for a split second on this ridge then the bullet will start to fall again from being stopped here and if the bullet moves slow through here the sensor could sense it for a longer period and think that if there's bullets down below and, the, and this sensor senses the falling bullet it could trigger the motor to turn off. I do have a delay in the electronic circuit that drives the thing so helps rectify that but just another thing of caution you need to be aware of the bullets getting caught up on this as it falls. The stand is just a piece of tubing that I welded a C-clamp onto, so that could go mounted to the table like that. And this is obviously an electronic box, and then it comes up here. Now this is the, the mount. I designed this 
to have it such that I could just loosen these bolts then I could tip the angle of the bucket and the purpose for that was because I as you can see the bucket there it's not a 45 degree angle it's probably more like a, a 30 degree angle and I wanted that to be able to adjust the tip of the, the tilt of the uh, bucket because if for some reason the bullets weren't properly tipping over when they come out the mouth I wanted to make sure that uh, they would so I could adjust that angle to really tweak it to make it work better and as you can see here it comes back here there is a bit of a lip back here I have a mirror mounted up there so when I look up I can see if, if the bullet if the, if the collator is empty but you don't have to have this here you just have the tube now if you don't have a welder you could probably make this out of wood uh, just make sure you glue and staple and screw everything together pretty tight but what I've got here is this is six inches across here six inches of angle iron across here and the bucket just rests, rests in the angle iron and from the bench to the top here I've got this is um, that's 25 inches so that's 26 29 inches the bucket rests on the angle iron but what I did here is I just cut out uh, a piece of wood it's like a and just put it in there on both sides and glued that to the bucket so you can see it put the, the wood in there like that and as far as this back is concerned I just used a 90 degree bracket and screwed the bucket on I would recommend that when you make the bracket whether you know be out of metal or wood or whatever make it so it's adjustable also um, put everything together on your bench and use a bunch of c-clamps to tighten it all together and then test run this thing and then tweak the stand to be the correct angle you know whatever and when everything seems to be up and running then you can take your stand that's all c-clamped together you can go over to your welding bench and weld it all together or you could bring it to a buddy that has a welder or to a welding shop and they could weld it all together for you now for the bucket uh, the motor see my description below for the part number for the motor but uh, this is just a two gallon plastic bucket from uh, Home Depot. I have it mounted with just these regular bolts and washers. Uh, you need to make sure that it's obviously in the center otherwise the thing won't work very well. Now we have the bucket and we have a couple layers of MDF uh, board, medium density fiber board I guess that's what that stands for. And um, I cut the bottom out of the bucket and I just I used my uh, finish nailer air, air gun and I just nailed air nailer. I nailed it together, but you could glue the bottom in. Another quick look at the operation. I've got a screwdriver here from Home Depot with a square shaft and that fits into the motor. And it's just a piece of plywood here that uh, would to fix the uh, that to it. So as you can see, like that. Now as for the operation, you turn this thing on. And as you can see here, the bullets fall in there. They come around if they're upside down they will turn to upside down and you fall in the hole so the angle of that tube looks like that so it's not like a square but it falls down through so now this one here the bullet comes through it doesn't tip over so the magic in this mechanism is, is this, take this plate out, what we've got, we've got a groove cut here and that's where the bullets will follow through. So you've got the bucket and you've got a plate here and you've got a hole. You look down through that hole, that's what it looks like. These bolts are actually countersunk into this top plate and they're there so this this plate won't move so if I want to actually remove this plate I have to take these bolts out but this plate consists of two layers I guess it's one quarter inch MDF board and I don't know this is like four or five bucks or less at uh, Home Depot the two layers of board the bottom one you could probably use the one eighth inch for that it looks like it's one quarter and as you could see there you want to really round out the, this plate such that when the bullets fall through they're not going to interfere and get caught up in this hole and the two layers when you cut the groove in this so the bullets will follow you want to make sure that uh, you know you may want to have a different plate here for a different caliber so 45 
diameter of those bullets are probably going to be different than say a nine millimeter so you'd want a different groove cut here now cutting the groove is probably one of the last things you want to do when you get the your top board cut you want to probably take a bullet and put it upside down and either put some molly on it or put some graphite or something and put it in the hole and let the bullet go through the machine and cut a I guess mark a path of where it follows the tip the nose of the bullet and when you know that then you can cut the groove such that you know the groove will the nose of the bullet will run into the groove and run out to the edge where once at the edge it will be tipped over and then this bucket then will tip it up and bring it in when I cut this groove what I used was a Dremel tool with a milling bit and you just use the milling bit to cut the groove it may take some trial and error but you'll get it the motor I used has a spline shaft and this is just a screwdriver from like I said Home Depot three four bucks and that fits into there nicely that is what the screwdriver used to look like and the shaft here is three eighths of an inch square so this is just three quarter inch MDF get a 2x4 sheet with a diameter of 8 and 3 eighths to a quarter so somewhere between 8 and a quarter and 8 and 3 eighths and the diameter of the, the, the bottom of the bucket would also be the same for those other boards one of the most important things here is that, of course you want to have this a, a perfectly round circle so what I did is I just took a piece of aluminum and I drilled a hole in it from the center here so it's basically drill a small hole here and then you, you get your half of eight and a quarter whatever it is I drill a small hole here I broke a piece of a pencil lead out of a pen, wood pencil and just stick it in the hole and go around and trace a perfectly round circle and then I cut that up with a jigsaw now one of the more important things here is not so much how perfect this uh, the run out is of this circle or how good the circle is but how good the circle is from here to the inside here because each bullet is going to rest against this wall right here and you don't want any bullets one to be deeper than the other because if if there are differences in the depth in the depth of the bullets with respect to the radius of this thing some bullets may follow the groove and tip over other bullets may not tip over so you want this to be fairly consistent like for example there's one hole here that I actually put some duct tape on because when I cut it I cut it a little too deep but uh, you want to do one circle around here and cut that out to make the whole thing and then you do want to do a second circle which would be at this and then put that circle around there and so when you cut these grooves you know how deep to cut the groove as you can see here I traced a lot of lines on here to know exactly where to cut the grooves as far as the dimensions of the groove this is uh, this one this plate here is for 45 ACP and the diameter of my bullets are 0.452 so each groove I have like 0.469 I really don't think uh, it's too important how wide this thing is you want it to be like 0 0.469 0 0.475 0 0.432 you want the the width to be uh, enough that the bullet can freely tip over and won't get hung up so you really want to as you cut each hole you really want to test fit it with one of your bullets to make sure that you know there's no hang up and that the bullet can tip over no problem but the depthness the depth of each hole now when you like I said the depth from the hole to the radius like that that's not that's not so important what's important is that the distance from this hole to the bottom here you want that to be the same for each slot so just take care when you're cutting this thing out to that you address that as far as the top here like I already said this is just a piece of plywood with a notch cut in it screwed to the top so it could uh, act to you know keep that tight the bucket opening here for the bullets um, I mean, in trial and error you'll see what works you want this to be big enough such that when the bullet tips over the tip of the bullet doesn't bump this thing here so what I've got here this is five inches that way so I mean if you had to go around the bucket it's a bit more uh, this here is like two inches and then this part here is like three inches so two inches across here three inches across here this ramp then is like 
uh, inch, inch and three quarters of a ramp here. And here, I mean, this is like probably, here, this is like probably less than, less than half inch. So you can use your judgment there. I mean, essentially I've got, this is about quarter of an inch because I've got the bucket, the bucket here. And I've got quarter inch MDF as one layer, which is what the motor mounts onto. And the bolts go through that. And then I've got the second layer of MDF. And so the second layer does two things. One, it, it uh, lets you countersink the heads of these bolts. And two, it lets you cut a groove by trial and error. If the first groove and the first board doesn't work, chuck the board, get a second board. Or you can have different boards. And uh, the different boards could have different grooves for different calibers. Also lets you play with the with the hole there that, uh, that you may have to work with to get the bullets to fall through smoothly. So that's pretty much it for the mechanical construction of the bullet collator. If you have any questions that I didn't answer then please you know, uh, ask in the, in the section below and I'll try to answer it the best I can. If you like this video and you use the information to build your own collator, what I would like is if you can, do your own video of what you did, what you did differently, how you did it, how it's probably better than mine or different than mine and then t make that video a video response to this video and then anyone who does their own thing we can sort of build up a little database of ideas so people in the future that uh, want to build their own can use this and your idea and other ideas to hopefully come up with an even better mousetrap so that's it thanks for watching